Imagine this situation. A guard is sitting at his assigned post within a museum. The dilemma is that he needs to know an efficient amount of guards it would take to completely guard the museum. What is an efficient amount of guards to survey the museum or any arbitrarily sized polygon? The solution to your problem can be found by looking at a similar problem that was created in the 1970s that was answered by a mathematician named Stephen Fisk. Just like you guys, Fisk was trying to figure out what's the least number of guards needed to guard a building. So let's set up some ground rules for our problem. We'll only be looking at one floor of the museum, assuming that every other floor of the museum has the same layout. Once we solve it for one floor, we can just use that to solve it for every other floor of the museum. So we'll use the layout for one floor of the museum as the template for our problem. Let's go over to the classroom. So let's get started. And you'll see that by reducing the museum to just its layout, we can turn it into a polygon. A polygon is a 2D closed plane shape made up of straight edges. So what we're trying to do is find a way to arrange all the guards within the polygon in such a way that every point in the shape is visible to at least one guard. And the rules of the problem are that a guard can rotate in order to see every angle from their position, but they can't move from their spot. So okay, let's see how we can solve the problem. We could just put a guard, put one guard <clears throat> at every vertex in the polygon because then literally every point in the shape would be guarded by one guard. But what we're trying to do is find the least number of guards needed to guard the museum. So let's use the letter N to represent the number of walls that a building has. So according to Fisk, um, any building that has N walls can be guarded by at most N over three guards. So this is the formula that we're going to use. Let's try it out with some examples. A triangle has three sides, so when we plug it into the formula, we see that only one guard is needed. This is true because one guard in the middle could rotate and see every point in the triangle. It turns out that we only need one guard for any convex shape. But does this work for more complex polygons? When Fisk solved the problem in 1975, he used a museum shape that looked like a comb and had 15 walls. 15 divided by 3 is 5, and so we see that 5 guards are enough to guard the entire museum. Great! Now we have our formula to solve our problem. Let's use our own floor plan. So now we'll apply the formula to our original building layout. So first we have to count up all the sides of the shape, and for our building it only has 18 sides. So if we plug that number into the formula, we get 18 over 3, which is equal to 6. So for our building layout, the most guards we need to guard the shape is 6. So now we've got to figure out how we should arrange the guards within the shape to make sure that every part of the shape is covered. So first, we'll divide the polygon into sections containing only triangles. So what we're doing is we're taking lines and connecting all the vertices of the polygon. How do we know that any polygon can be broken up into triangles? Let's try it out on a few examples. The simplest polygon is a triangle, and a triangle, which has three sides, is already triangulated. For polygons with more sides than three, we need to prove that we can always find a line segment to divide the shape into two different parts. If we try it on a square which has four sides, we see that we can draw a line through the middle and turn it into two triangles. For most shapes, we can just use one corner at the starting point and use the two neighboring vertices to make a triangle. If the shape is concave, we can still divide it into triangles. Then next, we'll use a graph theory concept known as chromatic coloring 
to color every vertex in the polygon. And chromatic coloring is when we color each vertex so that no two vertices connected by a line have the same color. So okay, let's start with the red. So after the whole polygon is divided, we can look at the shape and count up the number of vertices for each color we use. So let's start with red. If we count up all the red vertices, we'll see that we have seven red vertices. And for green, if we count it up, we'll see that we have six green. So here we see that the color with the lowest number of vertices is blue, and blue is the five is less than the six, which is what we got for the n over three. So now we've narrowed it down to five, which is a more efficient amount of guards we need to guard the whole floor. So we'll see that by placing the guards at these points where we have the blue vertices. We would always guard the floor. We will prove that the color with the least number of vertices must be less than or equal to n over 3. We'll use blue to represent the color with the least number of vertices in the proof. We'll proceed by contradiction. The three colors are red, green, and blue, which add up to the total amount of vertices n. This means that the count of each color must be at least equal to one third of n. However, let's assume the number of blue vertices is greater than n over 3. Then red plus green plus blue is greater than n, which is a contradiction. So the number of blue vertices must be less than or equal to n over 3, completing the proof. An extension of the previous problem is orthogonal polygons. Polygons whose interior angles are either 90 degrees or 270 degrees. If there are n corners, the orthogonal art gallery theorem claims that there are n over 4 guards at most needed to cover the entire polygon. We will first dissect it into convex quadrilaterals and then use the same method as before of chromatic coloring to find the maximum amount of guards needed to cover the entire polygon. We can then use the same proof as before except replacing n over 3 with n over 4. And rolling. Hey, why isn't he moving? I don't know. You should do something about it. Hey, go flick him. Ah, uh, I got it, I got it. To recap, you will dissect the polygon, then use chromatic coloring technique, and finally choose the smallest color group.